Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay and Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair bring you Our Miss Brooks starring Eve Arden. It's time once again for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks under the direction of Al Lewis. Well, many schools hold various popularity polls from time to time, and Madison High School, where our Miss Brooks teaches English, is no exception. No, and I felt extremely honored last week because I had been voted faculty queen of the football team. Although I can't help thinking that they could have dreamed up a more glamorous title for me than Miss Pigskin of 1950. <laughs> Anyway, Friday morning, Walter Denton picked me up in his broken-down, hopped-up jalopy, or, as the girls call it, the devil's playground. <laughs> to drive me down to dear old Madison, or, as I call it, the devil's playground. <laughs> well, Walter, you seem quite chipper this morning. I'm more than chipper. I'm a bird on the wing. <laughs> My spirits are soaring like an eagle in the blue. Well, I don't like to bring you down, but you just flew through a red light. <laughs> What's the cause of this pre-dawn gaiety? Our football team, Miss Brooks. Wait till you see them in action. We're going to amaze the entire gridiron world this year. I thought we amazed the gridiron world last year, Walter. As I recall, in the 15 games we played, we had a perfect record, unblemished by a single victory. <laughs> well, you see, it's coaching that makes a difference. And this year, things are going to be a lot different. We got Bronco. You mean we're going to buck our players into the end? <laughs> no, Pam, I mean Bronco Dawson. He's one of the greatest ex-players alive. Huh, with him coaching Madison, we're a cinch. Seems to me I have read his name somewhere. Wasn't he voted a pure American or something? Well, that's all American. <laughs> <laughs> and he made it for three years, too. Well, I hope he does well for our team. If only for Mr. Boynton's sake... It's amazing how the success or failure of our football team affects his spirits. Well, what's amazing about it? Mr. Boynton's always been a fan. And just because he's a little on the square side, maybe, doesn't mean that, well, underneath he isn't regular. Is that what you really think of Mr. Boynton, Walter? Sure. What if he is a cornball on the surface? <laughs> <laughs> Down below, he's pure gold. You just gotta dig a little. <laughs> Frankly, my shovel is bent by now. <laughs> I mean, he is a fine teacher, Walter. Sure he is. He may not be much of a spender, but he sure likes to celebrate when the team does okay. You're right about that. At the risk of sounding like an elephant, I remember a game that they did win. It was three years ago, and after it, we went out to dinner, and then a show, and then to a cafe to dance. Sounds terrific. Oh, it was. Mr. Boynton was like a man in a dream. In fact, it wasn't until two days later that he realized we didn't go Dutch. <laughs> well, don't worry. Old Bronco will add to your store of happy memories this season, Miss Brooks. Especially with Stretch Snodgrass in the backfield. Oh, what an athlete that kid is. He's got a great pair of legs, a great pair of arms, and a real head on his shoulders. That's the best kind. <laughs> now, we could only get something into that head. <laughs> I know Stretch isn't any Einstein in the classroom, but on that field, he's a genius. And he's sure crazy about Bronco, yeah, especially after what happened yesterday. Did you hear about it? Well, I... As Stretch was pushing a wheelbarrow full of football equipment across the field, see, when three hoodlums sneaked up on him. Yes, I... And while two of them held Stretch down, the other guy made off with the stuff. Well, Bronco came along about then. He saw what was going on, and boy, did he light into those two guys. Yes, I heard about it. Well, then, why did you make me repeat the whole thing? <laughs> I like adventure stories. <laughs> oh, what an athlete that Bronco is. He used to be heavyweight boxing champion of the Navy, you know. Yeah, he was telling Mr. Boynton the other day he's going to give him some tips on the manly art of self-defense. He better not. Mr. Boynton's defense is tough enough as it is. <laughs> Here's the dear old school. Say, there's Stretch locking up his bike. Hi, Stretch, old pal. Hello, Walter. Hello, Miss Brooks. Good morning, Stretch. No, ma'am. Walter and I would just... What do you mean, no, ma'am? <laughs> it's not a good morning. Not only is it not a good morning, it's a rotten morning. What's wrong? Well, I got a good mind to quit this old school. That's what I got a good mind to quit. <laughs> quit? But you can't do that, Stretch. Not after...
after all the time you've put in. Walter's right, Stretch. One more year and you're eligible for a pension. <laughs> well, this ain't no time to be whismical, Miss Brooks. <laughs> I'm not being whismical, Stretch. <laughs> I'm just trying to be realistic. Real- <laughs> <laughs> What's the trouble? Well, I thought we was going to have a swell football team this year because we had old Bronco Dawson coaching us, but now we ain't. We ain't? We haven't. That's right, we ain't. <laughs> Why ain't we? <laughs> Mr. Conklin seen him fighting those roughnecks on the school grounds yesterday without giving him any chance to explain, snitched to the Board of Education and had him fired. But we gotta do something. That's not fair. Are you sure you've got the facts straight, Stretch? Did Mr. Conklin just arbitrarily dismiss Bronco? Exactly. He just artabellary canned him. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the guys in the team are so sore, they're talking about not showing up for practice after school. Oh, but they shouldn't do that. They need the practice. Well, that's what I said. I told them they'd just be spiting their own noses. <laughs> spiting their own noses? Sure. There must be some other way to get Bronco back. Yeah, wait a minute. I've got an idea. Miss Brooks, who was just voted queen of football at Madison? I was. Correct. Now, who is the logical candidate to step into Mr. Conklin's office and demand Bronco's reinstatement? Would you repeat the question, please? <laughs> Walter's right, Miss Brooks. You gotta talk to Mr. Conklin. Oh, but boys, I don't carry any weight. Well, your belt is just as good That's as... That's not... <laughs> <laughs> I just don't get along with Mr. Conklin. Oh, you gotta do it, Miss Brooks. Think of Mr. Boynton. You said yourself Mr. Boynton's a new man when the team's going good. Well, he is, but I... I can see it all now. Bronco puts a winning team on the field. You and Mr. Boynton watch their glorious victory. Mr. Boynton takes you out to dinner, and then to a movie. And after that, you go to a nightclub and you dance. <sighs> the music is soft and dreamy. And as Mr. Boynton holds you in his arms, the air is charged with excitement. <laughs> <laughs> he holds you tighter and tighter. And as you glide over the smooth floor, with your face pressed close to his, your ecstasy knows no bounds. You're filled with a delicious sense of well-being. You're no longer hungry for romance, starved for affection. Well, Miss Brooks? Don't wrap those words up. I'll eat them right here. continue in just a moment, but first, here is Vern Smith. Reader's Digest reports the results of one of the most extensive experiments in dentifrice history. Yes, Reader's Digest reports the very same research which proves brushing teeth right after eating with Colgate Dental Cream stops tooth decay best. And here are additional important facts. Over a two-year period, the Colgate way stopped more decay for more people than ever before reported in dentifrice history. Yes, the Colgate way of brushing teeth right after eating stopped tooth decay best, better than any other home method of oral hygiene. Even more important, there were no new cavities whatever for more than one out of three who used Colgates as directed. No other dentifrice, ammoniated or not, has proof of such results. The best results ever reported for a dentifrice of any type. And you should know that Colgate Dental Cream, while not mentioned by name, was the only toothpaste used in the research reported in July Reader's Digest. Yes, Colgate Dental Cream, and only Colgate Dental Cream, was used in this research. So always use Colgates to clean your breath while you clean your teeth. And when you follow the Colgate way, Colgate Dental Cream stops tooth decay best. Well, Walter and Stretch convinced me that without Bronco Dawson, Madison couldn't have a winning football team. And I knew that without a winning football team, I couldn't have a winning evening with Mr. Boynton. So I let them aim me in the direction of Mr. Conklin's office and wish me good luck. Do the best you can, Miss Brooks. Remember, we're rooting for you. We sure are, Miss Brooks. Please try your uttermost to get old Bronco reinstated. (laughs) (laughs) I'll do whatever I can, Stretch. (laughs) See you later. So long, Miss Brooks. Now, there goes a great gal. I only hope Mr. Conklin's in his pleasant mood. Which one is that? (laughs) When he doesn't bite you on sight. 
Don't worry about his being too rough on anybody today, Walter. I think I softened him up for a while when I done what I'd done this morning. He's probably scared stiff. Stretch, what did you do? Well, I thought I'd make him sweat a little on account of what he'd done to Bronco. So I phoned him up and put a handkerchief over the mouthpiece to disguise my voice. Uh, what did you say to him? Well, I just said, Hiya, Mr. Conklin, this is Bronco Dawson. I'm coming to school today and beat your big fat head in. <laughs> Harriet, I was just going to drop into your dad's office. Is he busy, do you know? I don't think so, but he's awfully nervous. Every time he hears a sound, he practically jumps under his desk. And he's had the custodian put a big lock and chain on his door. Sounds like he's expecting me. <laughs> Maybe you can find out what's bothering him. He wouldn't tell me a thing. All right, Harriet, I'll see you in class. Bye. Ah! <laughs> Who goes there? It's a friend, Miss Brooks. Are you alone, Miss Brooks? Yes, sir, I am. One moment, please. I'll let you in. Good morning, Mr. Get Brooks. in quickly! <laughs> Do I get any time off for good behavior? <laughs> Somehow your devastating bon mots just don't tweak me this morning. <laughs> now, get to the point. What do you want of me? Oh, nothing for myself, Mr. Conklin. I wanted to talk to you about somebody else. Who? Bronco Dawson. Yes! <laughs> that bully? Oh, but he isn't, Mr. Conklin. He hasn't had a fair chance to explain. Fair chance? Do you realize that since he heard that I recommended his dismissal to the board, he has threatened me with bodily harm? Bronco threatened you? On the telephone. In Dawson's own words, Miss Brooks, he is coming to school today to beat my big fat head in. <laughs> oh, that's ridiculous, Mr. Conklin. He wouldn't dare to beat your big fat head in. <laughs> my big fat what? He wouldn't beat in your big fat anything. <laughs> I'm a little confused, sir, but actually your head is neither big nor fat. Well, thank you. It's just pleasingly plump. <laughs> you have made me very happy, my dear. Now get out. Oh, sir, you've just got to listen to reason. Bronco was only fighting to protect school property from some hoodlums. Stretch Snodgrass told me so himself. A cock and bull story born of hero worship. Oh, but Mr. Conklin, The case I... is closed. In a few days, the board will provide us with a new coach. I wish you'd reconsider this matter, Mr. Conklin. It means a great deal, not only to me, but to the entire student, Boynton. A student body. <laughs> <laughs> you see, the team has just voted me faculty queen. Uh, congratulations, Your Majesty. <laughs> now, with your permission, I'd like to back away from the royal presence. I've got things to do. Yes, sir. Oh, oh one moment. Just before you came in, the custodian told me that some of the players he spoke with are planning to cut football practice after school today. Yes, I know, but that can all be changed. I think so, too. And since you're so popular with the boys, it seems entirely possible that you could have a hand in changing it. What are you getting at, Mr. Conklin? I have another crown for your head, Queenie. <laughs> <laughs> you are hereby appointed temporary football coach. <laughs> Mr. Conklin, there's no need for that if you'll only give Bronco a chance to explain. The mere fact that he was an all-American fullback and heavyweight champion of the Navy is no reason for you to be afraid of him. Afraid of him? Who said I was afraid of him? Osgood Conklin fears no man. You forget, Miss Brooks, that you are speaking to the former captain of the Rutgers tug-of-war team. <laughs> for three years, I was anchor man on that team. Atlas, they used to call me. And no matter how tenacious our adversary, I could always be depended upon to see heavyweight champion of the Navy! <laughs> oh! It's just the phone. You can come out from under the desk, Atlas. <laughs> oh, oh yes, yes, the phone. One moment, please. Uh, this may be another threatening call from Bronco, Miss Brooks. I... I'll have to ask you to wait in the hall. But, Mr. Conklin... If I lose my temper with him, I may forget to use the King's English. Come, I'll let you out. Yes, sir. Hello? 
Zimmerman's Butcher Shop. <laughs> Quit your clowning, Osgood Conklin. This is Mrs. Davis. Who? Margaret Davis, Miss Brooks' landlady. Oh, oh, well, Margaret, I'm very happy to hear from you. Very happy indeed. Well, you may not be so happy when I tell you why I called. Your wife just dropped over and told me that you had poor Bronco Dawson fired. Well, what has that got to do... You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Bronco was the best football coach that Madison ever had. Now, please, Margaret. My actions in this matter were completely justified. I simply had to do something... If I were a man, I'd come over there and beat your big fat head in. (laughs) (laughs) Now, see here, Margaret. Bronco Dawson engaged in a common brawl on my campus yesterday. He's nothing but a ruffian. He's a perfect gentleman. I happened to witness part of that encounter, and the moment Bronco saw me, he stopped hitting those bullies. What? That's how much of a gentleman he is. He told me himself he would never hit anyone in the presence of a woman. He wouldn't? (laughs) (laughs) Well, perhaps we'd better discuss this another time, Margaret. But I'll talk to you later. I've been suddenly taken busy. Good day. Come in, Miss Brooks. I don't want to seem insistent, Mr. Conklin, Come but... Come in, you wonderful woman, you. <laughs> uh, sit down, my dear. Uh, take my chair. I'll squat on the floor. Uh, go on, go on. Sit in that swivel chair. Lean back on it. Take a nap, if you like. A nap? You mean I'm awake now? <laughs> Oh, there's the bell, Mr. Conklin. I've got a class starting. You mean we've got a class, Miss Brooks. I have long been of the opinion that a man in my position should occasionally refurbish his education. And where can I better acquire additional knowledge than by kneeling at the feet of wisdom? Your feet, Miss Brooks. If I knew you were coming, I'd have shined my shoes. on those parallel bars. Uh, I've got the lineman working on the heavy weights, Miss Brooks. Oh, thanks, Mr. Boynton. It was very nice of you to offer your assistance this afternoon. I don't know much about football. Oh, that's all right, Miss Brooks. Of course, I, I can't help feeling that Mr. Conklin should never have let Bronco Dawson go. It, if it's not too late, I'd like to talk to him about it. Do you know where I could find Mr. Conklin now, Miss Brooks? Probably in the bottom drawer of his desk. <laughs> <laughs> He's afraid that Bronco's going to beat him up for getting him fired. Oh, but that's absurd. Bronco's a very peaceful sort of chap. You know, I got to know him pretty well in recent days. He told me he liked everything about Madison, even Mr. Conklin. In fact, he was planning on bringing his wife here from Millsboro. I didn't know Bronco was married. He never mentioned having a wife. Yeah, I know. (laughs) He's an odd one when it comes to women. He's an odd one. that, I meant he, he keeps his private life pretty much to himself. He sort of confided in me, though. Even told me he had a baby a couple of years ago. Never mentioned it to a soul. Must have been quite a surprise to his wife. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's too late to do anything about Bronco now. He hasn't even come back to school for his uniform. Uh, pardon me, Miss Brooks. We got the blackboard all set up for skull practice. Good. Get the skulls together and we'll practice. <laughs> well, where's the board set up, Walter? Right near the tackling pit. Of course, those hoodlums stole our tackling dummy yesterday, so I had to borrow a big laundry bag from the cafeteria. I told Kenny Patterson to get it stuffed with sawdust or something. I hope he didn't forget. Hey, get a load of me, folks. I borrowed Bronco Dawson's uniform for today. It's the old number 99 he wore in college. Oh, good old 99. And that yellow jersey is hot stuff, all right. Well, how do you like it, Miss Brooks? Now I know how mustard looks when it's happy. (laughs) (laughs) But, Stretch, where's your own uniform? Well, that showed up missing. One of those hoods glommed on it yesterday while Bronco was clobbering the other two. How does that go again? I'll translate, Mr. Boynton. Stretch means his uniform was pilfered by one brigand while our football coach was taking punitive measures against his confederates. How does that go again? (laughs) Well, we better get going. I want to see if that laundry sack has been stuffed. In honor of me having old Bronco's uniform on, Miss Brooks, don't you think I ought to get the first shot at tackle practice? Well, don't look at me, Stretch. You'll have to settle for the sack. Hi, 
Daddy. What are you doing on the athletic field? I was on my way home, Harriet. Left the building through the side entrance today. But why, Daddy? Just for kicks. <laughs> you know, for a minute I thought you might be looking for old 99. I was hoping you might have changed your mind about letting him go. Old 99? Yes. That's what a lot of the kids call Bronco Dawson. Those are the numerals he wore on his college uniform. He's kept them to this day. I hope I've seen the last of Bronco Dawson and his numerals. I'm afraid you're not going to get your hope, Daddy. It looks like old 99 is coming out of the gym now. Where? Oh, there. Oh, dear. I'd like to stay and watch some practice, but I've got a date with Susie Prentice at 3.15, and I... Oh, golly, I'm late. See you later, Daddy. I've got to run. You've got to run? <laughs> oh, no. No, I'd better not. He'd nail me in a minute on this open field. <laughs> I've got to hide. I've got to hide. Ah, this laundry bag. <laughs> I'll just hop in here and pull the string. Champion of the Navy yet. <laughs> Uh, give me a hand with this dummy, will you, folks? All right, Walter. I'll help, too. Uh, I'm glad Kenny didn't forget to stuff it. From the way it feels, it must have stuffed it with blubber. <laughs> well, it was just hoisted up between these uprights. Yep. yep. <clears throat> now, now remember, fellas, hit it low and hit it hard. Come on, Stretch, you start it off. Okay, here goes. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty nice tackle stretch, but a, a little too low. What do you mean, too low, Mr. Boynton? I thought I hit it just right. Why don't you show him what you mean, Mr. Boynton? Me? But I haven't played football in years. Oh, go ahead, Mr. Boynton. With your physique, you'll grind that old sack into powder. <laughs> well, I'll try it if you want me to. I'll get a good running start. Uh... <laughs> now, stretch. Mr. Boynton can probably teach you plenty, so stop that groaning. Oh, me? <laughs> oh, wonderful, Mr. Boynton but, <laughs> but why so hard? You knocked the wind out of yourself No, I didn't I feel great Gosh, look at that sack It's all lopsided <laughs> Well, there's only one way to fix that Hit it from both sides at once <laughs> That's right It's often necessary for two men to bring down the ball carrier Now, Stretch, you hit him high and I'll hit him low Right, Mr. Boynton. And this time I'll make that old sack holler uncle. <laughs> uncle? <laughs> Did you say something, Stretch? No, sir. Didn't you say something? No. Walter, was that you? Not me. Was it you, Miss Brooks? It wasn't me. Isn't anyone going to ask me? <laughs> The sack. It talked. <laughs> oh, it sounds like Mr. Conklin's in there. Oh, heavens. Quick, release those pulleys. I'll get the drawstrings. Oh, it is Mr. Conklin. Yes, Miss Brooks, it is. And I blame you for this entire outrage. Me? But you I... knew I was threatened by Bronco Dawson. You knew I was trying to hide from him. And what more logical place for me to hide than here in this laundry bag? But that's not fair, Mr. Conklin. I, you should I... have known I was in there when you helped hoist me up. I'm sorry, Mr. Conklin. I have an ironclad alibi. An alibi? Yes, sir. Just take a look at the size of that bag. What has that got to do with it? I couldn't possibly think that even you were that big a dummy. <laughs> Brooks returns in just a moment, but first... Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. Tonight? Yes, tonight. Show him how much lovelier your hair can look after a luster cream shampoo. Luster cream, world's finest shampoo. No other shampoo in the world gives you K. Dumas' magic blend of secret ingredients plus gentle lanolin. Better than a soap, better than a liquid... Luster Cream is a dainty cream shampoo. Leaves hair three ways lovelier. Fragrantly clean, free of loose dandruff, glistening with sheen. Soft, manageable. 
Even in hardest water, luster cream lathers instantly. No special rinse needed after a luster cream shampoo. So gentle, luster cream is wonderful even for children's hair. Tonight? Yes, tonight, try luster cream shampoo. Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. You owe your charming glory to a luster cream shampoo. And now once again, here is our Miss Brooks. Well, by dint of some fast talking, I convinced Mr. Conklin that I wasn't the one responsible for his bruised condition. Of course, Walter, Stretch, and the rest of the team showed amazing loyalty. As soon as the bag was opened, they ran giggling into the hills. <laughs> <laughs> then Mr. Boynton went to the gym for some iodine, and I tried to soothe Mr. Conklin. He certainly was banged up. There was a big lump here, a small lump there, here a lump, there a lump, everywhere. A lump, a lump. Osgood Conklin was a mess. E I E I. Miss Brooks, do you know what I'll do if I ever get my hands on that Bronco Dawson? Yes, sir, you'll hold his arms. Now lie still, Mr. Conklin. Hi, Miss Brooks. Why is Daddy stretched out on the. Daddy, when did it happen? Take it easy, Harriet. Your daddy's been helping the football team. But the way he looks. He's worried, Harriet. He's a little concerned over Bronco's possible reaction to being fired. But Bronco doesn't even know he's been fired. What's that? The board wasn't to notify him until this morning, and he left town last night. I just stopped <laughs> home for a minute, Daddy, and found this wire for you. Oh, let me see that. Where are my glasses? Oh, they were in my vest pocket. <laughs> <laughs> you read it, Miss Brooks. All right. Dear Mr. Conklin, called home to Millsboro last night. Wife presented me with seven-pound fullback. Have taken job coaching Millsboro High. Know you'll understand. Thanks for everything, Bronco Dawson. Well, all's well that ends well. Ends well? I'm nothing but a mass of welts and bruises. But you're just thinking of yourself, Mr. Conklin. What about poor Bronco? Poor Bronco? Yes. Now he'll never get a chance to beat your big fat head in. <laughs> we to another Hour Miss Brooks show brought to you by Luster Cream Shampoo, the soft, glamorous, caressable hair, and Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay. Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, is produced by Larry Burns, written by Al Lewis and Joe Quillen, with music by Wilbur Hatch. Mr. Boynton is played by Jeff Chandler, Mr. Conklin by Gail Gordon. Others in tonight's cast were Jane Morgan, Dick Crenna, Gloria McMillan, and Leonard Smith. You want a beauty soap for a beauty bath. And your bath becomes a beauty bath when you change to proper cleansing with palm olive soap. For bathing with this beauty soap brings you the full, beautifying effects of palm olive's mild and gentle lather proved by doctors to bring most women lovelier complexions in just 14 days. Bath size palm olive is designed to give you everything you need for all over beauty care. Fragrance for daintiness, mildness for loveliness, purity for gentleness, big bath size for thriftiness. So get big bath size palm olive, so mild, so pure, so right for all of you. If you like mysteries that are as full of chuckles as chills, be sure to hear Mr. and Mrs. North every Tuesday over the same network. Don't miss the exciting and laughable adventures of these amateur detectives. Hear Mr. and Mrs. North every Tuesday night. And be with us again next week at the same time for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks. Bob Lamont speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.